Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about pricing yourself as a freelancer. So this is one of the most frequent and common questions I get, which is basically, how do I price myself as a freelancer? Because I know it can be super difficult in the beginning if one, you have no experience, and two, you just never set prices for yourself before. Now, in all honesty, there is no real cut and dry answer as to how you should price yourself, but there are some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that have helped me not only as a freelancer, but also in other aspects of the side hustles and businesses I run. Because when I first got started out, I was so lost. All I did was base my prices off of other people in my niche. And looking back on it, there are so many better ways to go about doing it. I charged the bare minimum of what I could when I first started out. Yes, for the first probably like three weeks when I was still learning the skill that made sense, but I didn't increase my prices until maybe like three or four months in, which is not good. Now keep in mind when you're pricing yourself, it's not just about the money, it's also about like your quality of life. So for me personally, when I first got started out freelancing, I was not doing it for the money. I was doing it more so I could go out with my friends on the weekend. I was just hoping to make 30 bucks a week and I accomplished that very quickly, but I didn't scale up from that. And as time went on, I realized I could scale way past $30 a week. I just, I didn't know how to set my prices the right way. And looking back on it, one, I didn't have the confidence to do it. Two, I wasn't sure exactly what my prices should be. And I was definitely afraid that I was going to lose these clients that I've been working with for the past few weeks. So first things first, when pricing yourself, it really all does depend on the industry that you're in. So typically in the freelancing world, more techie jobs typically make more money right off the bat. So if you're a video editor, you'll probably be making more money than a graphic designer does right in the beginning. Now this comes down to numerous different factors, including software, time to complete the order, as well as credibility. And credibility is actually a huge, huge factor in all of this. So if you have not watched my most recent video that I put out on Thursday about how to get started as a freelancer and how to gain clients as a freelancer, go watch that video because I actually talk a lot about credibility in there and it's super, super important when you're first starting out and when you need to determine how you set your prices. Now, the reason I say credibility is super important is because I'm a copywriter, right? So when I first got started out, I had no right to charge $100 for 200 words of writing. I could not do that. I had no credibility behind me. I had no positive reviews, no negative reviews. I had no portfolio in the making. So I could not go out and charge $100 right off the bat. I needed to build up my credibility. I was not worth that much money and I didn't have any credentials to back any of what I was doing. Like I said before, if you have not watched that video yet, I put it out on Thursday. I will leave the link in the description below. Now, another big thing you wanna consider is experience. This sort of ties hand in hand with credibility, but it is a little bit different. So if we're looking at a platform like Fiverr, they base it on a level system. Typically new sellers charge between anywhere from five to $25 per order, but that like really depends on what industry you're in. Now for anyone that's wondering, the basic breakdown of Fiverr goes new seller, level one, level two, top rated seller. They also have Fiverr Pro, but Fiverr Pro is for like hand vetted professionals and they are very, very good at what they do in their specific niche. So when you first get started on a platform like Fiverr or Upwork, you want to compare yourself to other people in your niche and in your level. So what I would do is I'd go to Fiverr and I would click on writing and translation and then I would click on blog posts. Then I would go down here to seller details and I would filter it by new seller. Hit apply. This is where you can see a bunch of new sellers in your niche and who are pricing themselves at different rates depending on what they offer. So you can also filter it out a little bit more for me personally. What I would do is I would filter it out by English and lifestyle because that is the categories that I would work in. From there, you can click on a bunch of different services and see what they're offering for the basic, standard, and premium packages. So for instance, if we looked at this one, for the basic package, it is 300 words for $35. Okay, not bad. We'll go back, we'll look at this one right here. For this one, it is $25 for 500 words. So now that you have an idea of what other people are pricing themselves at, what you are going to do is take the average of five different gigs. Now you wanna do the gigs that are in your niche and at your level. And that is what you'll set your price point as. Now, in the beginning, I did not do it that way. I should have done it that way. 
It wasn't until I took Alex Basulo's course where I was like, oh, this is actually a really good idea. I should be doing this instead, which was like a month and a half, two months later. So go on Fiverr, go on these different platforms and see what other people are charging in your niche and at your level. Take the average of like, I don't know, five to eight of these different gigs and that's what you should be setting your price as. Because if you don't do it like this, you will probably be undercharging or you might even be overcharging. In the beginning, I charged $5 for a thousand words of copy, which is ridiculous looking back on it. I was undercharging myself so much. So go look at your competitors. You know, you can use your competitors as reference for gig creation as well and base your pricing off of those competitors. So the next way to determine your pricing is to base it off of what you're offering. So for me, I started with three different gigs, blog posts, sales copy, and product descriptions. Now for my sales copy and for my product description gig, it was the same amount of words, but I was charging double for my sales copy gig because of what I was offering in that gig. My product description was very bare minimum. Whereas with my sales copy, I did a lot of research. I added keywords. It was a lot more of an in-depth process. Therefore I was charging more. So that's something you should really consider as well. I know a lot of copywriters base it off of word count and price per word. I don't like doing it like that because there's a lot more that goes into it than just typing out the words. Okay, so this next piece of advice is one that I wish I knew and I wish that I followed in the very beginning because it would have saved my life. I'm not even joking. It would have saved my entire business as a freelancer in the very beginning. And that piece of advice is to price yourself off of how many orders you are receiving. So I was doing perfectly fine in the beginning, you guys. I only had a few clients, a few orders. I didn't feel the need to increase my prices. Once like November and December hit, I was up to like 13 to 15 clients at once and I did not increase my prices. So make sure that if you were getting more clients, you are increasing your prices. Yes, you might lose half of your clients, but that is okay because it will balance out. You might have six clients instead of 12, but you're making the same amount of money. You cannot keep working at the same price with the demand increasing. It's virtually impossible to do this. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, you will burn yourself out. So if you are getting more clientele, if you're getting more orders in your queue, if you're having more people reach out to you asking for work done, jack up the prices. Also, don't be afraid to limit how many people order from you. I wish this was something I did in the beginning as well, because on Fiverr, you have the option to set how many gigs can be purchased at once. So instead of unlimited, I set my product descriptions to like three or four. That way, if all four of those were taken, nobody else could order from me. That was a game changer. But I'm telling you right now, the best piece of advice that I can give throughout this entire video is if you get more clients, raise your prices. I was doing fine up until April, but I actually took a break from Fiverr. And if you've been following me for a while, you know this. I took a break between the end of April and June. I wasn't working on Fiverr at all because I had to deal with schoolwork. I had to deal with finals and I could not deal with having so many clients at once. So instead of, you know, doing the smart thing where I increased my prices, I did the nuclear option and I just went off the platform. So don't be stubborn and just go out there and increase your prices. And once you start building up those positive reviews and those positive testimonials, then people will see that you actually have something to offer. So just because you went from $5 a gig to maybe $15 a gig, that doesn't mean that nobody's going to buy from you. Because if you already have those positive reviews, then people know that you have quality work to offer. Also, it's not unethical or wrong to start charging a client more because you increase their prices. That was another big thing that I ran into was I was afraid to increase my prices with clients that I already had because I was afraid to lose them. You know, a lot of my clients were actually okay with it. They were like, good for you for actually standing up for yourself and increasing your prices. And some of them stuck with me, others they left. But don't be afraid to do that because you never know. You're always gonna find someone who's gonna be willing to pay at your new rate. All right, so this last tip is kind of a given. You need to be pricing yourself based off of how much money you actually need to survive. But once you start increasing your prices, start considering how much you actually need to charge for groceries, rent, going out, or whatever specific situations that you are in. Like I said, when I first started out, my goal was to just make $30 a week, and that was totally fine in the beginning because I only used that money to go out with friends and nothing more. But as time went on, I realized that I could turn this into something much more. And that's when I started increasing my prices so that I could start paying off my student loans. 
Now, I'm not living on my own. I don't have to pay for groceries or car or anything like that right now. So for me, my goal was to start saving up to pay off my student loan. That way, when I graduated, it was not nearly as bad. So that's something you should really consider once you're a few months into freelancing, is how you're gonna price yourself so that you can actually survive as a freelancer. Building off of sustainability and pricing yourself for how much you need to survive, consider taxes as well. Naive Olivia back a year ago did not even think about that, so definitely consider that if you are gonna have a certain percentage of tax taken out, you know, it depends per state and who you are and all, all, all the jazz. Now, overall, the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to have is that you're probably not going to be charging a lot in the beginning. You know, I was charging five bucks in the very beginning for a thousand words, which coming out of my mouth sounds ridiculous now, but I was able to scale up pretty quickly once I learned these tips and these tricks. So if you apply them early on, then you'll be totally fine. But the best way to increase your prices is to increase your skill. If you can build on your skill, build up that portfolio, start bringing in those positive reviews, then I'm telling you right now, you will exponentially grow your freelancing business. It's gonna take hard work, it's gonna take consistency, and it's probably gonna be a little bit of hair pulling out of your head, not gonna lie. But the end result will definitely be worth it. So the biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this entire video is that there are so many different ways to price yourself. What it comes down to is your specific needs and your specific situation. Some people get into freelancing with amazing skill sets and they can start charging at higher prices right away. Other people, like me, had no clue what I was doing. No clue at all, didn't know anything about copywriting, didn't know how to price myself. It was just a jumbled mess. But what I'm hoping is that you can learn some of these tips and tricks right away. That way, when you start freelancing, it's not as overwhelming for you. And you're not feeling like, oh my god, I have all these clients now. I don't know how to price myself. I don't know if I should be getting rid of them. I don't know what to do. You know, in the beginning, it's going to be very hard. It's going to be really hard. You're probably going to be charging very, very low for what you're doing. But with hard work and consistency and building up your skill set, you will quickly be able to charge a lot more money. And if you do have what's considered a high income skill, then companies are willing to pay a lot more money to hire you. Just know that there is not one perfect way to price or formulate how much you want to charge. I've had to increase my prices with long term clients. Is it uncomfortable to do? Yes, it is, but it is necessary. And honestly, worst comes to worst, they say no, and then you find someone else. So I hope you learned a little bit more about how to price yourself in today's video, and make sure you give my YouTube a subscribe. Also, I come up with videos every Thursday and every Saturday, so make sure you turn on notifications if you want to know when my next video comes out. Okay, I am. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I cannot speak.